Hello and welcome to A Splash of Paint, 60 colourful minutes of artistic inspiration brought to you in association with the SAA, Society for All Artists. So sit back and enjoy some of the latest creative tips and techniques from a selection of today's most popular leading artists. Let's take a look at some of the artistic treats coming up on today's programme. Everyone's favourite perennial pastel artist, Vic Beercroft, demonstrates how velour paper is perfect for making your artwork shine. Versatile artist Paul Beatty returns with his favourite piece of cutlery to stir up an acrylic mountain scene. An experimental artist, Alison Board, shares her top five tips for applying masking fluid to achieve some spectacular detailed results. But before all that, let's take a look at painting a couple of simple skies. I've got a quarter imperial sheet of watercolour paper there. I'm just going to do two different skies. First of all, a wet on dry sky, a very clean, flat, simple blue sky. And this side, something a bit more wet into wet. And just to compare the difference between the two. So I'll start off just by mixing up the colours. Now I've got a large brush, this is a 20. And we need quite a lot of colour when you're working dry on the paper. So I'm going to use some alizarin crimson, very pale. And then I'm going to use some natural yellow, very pale. Try and match the consistency of strength of colour when you do a wet on dry sky. And then natural blue, which will go in last. That could be slightly heavier. As long as the colour's not thinner in comparison to the lighter two, the lighter ones will be lower down. You shouldn't get too many problems. The secret to this is to have lots and lots of colour on your brush. And I'm going to start at the bottom and just do a band. As soon as that goes on, you can see where the paint's gathering. That's the secret to clean skies, because you can then pick that up for the next row and so on. Now, natural yellow is very pale and it works nice at the bottom of the sky. Working dry on the paper is probably the best way of getting the skies clean. I can put the brush straight into the crimson without cleaning, because it'll just mix on the paper anyway. And we'll go slightly higher and bring the crimson down. Again, lots and lots of paint on the brush. Let it build up at the bottom. That's where you work it through. At the point where the colours touch, keep it going. Keep going down into the natural yellow until it almost becomes like a sort of mixture. This is a graduated wash sky. The blue comes in next, right at the top. Again, I'm just going to put a bit more water with that. Nice loaded brush and just shows how simple a watercolour sky can actually be. If the paper was wet, the paint would be running down like rain, therefore it doesn't quite give the clean effect of the gradient skies. But quite often, it's nice to get a sky like this, just a very straightforward sky, just clean and simple. And again, at this point there, just keep it going, and eventually it'll run out of blue and turn into the crimson and the red. If you get a few bands, I mean, they are quite nice in the skies, but there's no harm in cleaning your brush, giving it a really good squeeze. And you can see how the brush has gone flat, like a paddle shape, like a spade. And that's quite nice sometimes, just to lightly glaze over the top. And it just softens away any hard lines. But quite often, those bands are actually quite nice. On this side, just to see a comparison, we'll do a wet into wet sky. So we'll actually wet the sky area first. Being careful not to get any water over that side because that's where your cauliflowers kick in. So we'll just make sure it's all covered. Look down the edge for the dry patches. There we go. So make sure it's all nice and covered. And it's a good tip as well to get a bit of kitchen roll, just to make sure there's no excess building up around the edges. Give it a few seconds to soak in and then start painting. But this time what we'll do is we'll do colour mixing on the paper. So I'm actually getting the colours to mix together. So we'll go in and we'll twist the yellow in. Now this is the difference straight away. You can see it running down. The cotton-based papers work better for these sort of skies because it's more absorbent. And that's what you're trying to go for. So just twisting in, giving it a bit of a mix. We've got the crimson there as well, alizarin crimson. 
It does help to do that as well, wipe it on the tissue first. You don't want masses of color, and then give that a twist. And start to mix the colors on the paper. So this is more of an atmospheric sky compared to the one on this side, which was more of a sort of clean, flat, simple sky. So all the colors nicely mixed together. And then the blue, which is slightly thicker, right at the top. And again, just get it all twisting through. So a much more dramatic stormy sky. Now, can you see as the blue mixes with the red and the yellow, you start to get gray. This is what you'd expect because you're mixing three primary colors together. When that happens, you pretty much guarantee that you're gonna get gray. You can even go slightly thicker with the blue. Just add that little bit extra cloud that's just sweeping in front of the rest because the paper's still wet and there's no harm in doing what you did on the first sky, clean it, give it a nice squeeze, get all the water out of it, make sure your brush goes kind of flat, and then just brush away the base of the cloud into the paper. And there you go, folks. Two very different but both very useful skies. Right, it's time to welcome our first guest. Let's cross over to the other side of the studio and join everybody's favourite pastel artist, Vic Beercroft, as he demonstrates how velour paper is the perfect choice for making your artwork shine. I'm going to show you uh, the effects of velour paper with pastels. Um, for me, uh, velour paper is a kind of revelation. Uh, I first discovered it a few years ago, and it really holds pastel very, very well, uh, which is great if you want to put lots of layers on. Uh, it comes in a variety of uh, colours. Uh, this one is uh, a grey, and I tend to use either grey, warm sand, or sometimes black for atmospheric effects. So let's just uh, paint a, a fairly simple uh, sunset sky on this one, starting off with a, a little bit of yellow down here to represent the setting sun. And you'll see how easily the pastel goes onto the paper. We always have to rub it to push the pigment into the fibres of the paper, and that's what holds it there. You never have to spray this or fix it at all. In fact, you can do up to 100 layers quite easily as long as you rub it in. Then we'll have a little bit of a darker area at the top. And it's important to think about the colour of the paper that you're going to use on your project as well, because that will have a great effect. But you can see it goes on very, very smooth. Push it in with your fingers, take off the excess, and that pigment will be fixed there. The law paper is made up of nylon fibres, which are sprayed onto a backing paper, an acid-free backing paper. Uh, it's been around for quite a long time, actually, many, many years. In the old days, it was cotton fibres, now it's nylon. And I think the nylon has a better effect, because as you rub it, you kind of build up a little bit of a static charge, which then attracts the pastel dust. And it's perfect for anybody that might have some dust allergies or something like that, because all of the pastel goes into the paper. You don't get big clouds of dust, it won't drop onto the floor, and you never have to fix it. You can roll it up at the end if you want to. So let's put a little bit of uh, pink into our sky. This is just going to be a fairly simple representation of a sunset sky, so you can see the effect of the, the grey paper. And blend that into there. Now, one of the things that you can't do with velour, but I don't think it's a problem, is you can't blend one colour into another. You have to work in layers. But it's this layering process that actually gives you much more depth in your painting. Uh, rather than blending it and the paper getting clogged after two or three layers of pastel. This won't happen with velour. Just as long as you use the right pastels and the right technique, which is light layers and lots and lots of rubbing. Really push the pastel into the paper. You can rub it as hard as you like. One thing you'll notice now, now I've got a few uh, bits of pastel on there, a few strokes of pastel, is that if I take the side of my hand, rub it very, very hard, and you can hear that, it's not moving. It won't move, it won't smudge. So if you're thinking about pastels, or maybe you've tried them before and you don't like the fact that they uh, smudge all over the place, you rest your hand on it and you ruin it and so forth, then try velour. It really works wonders. It's perfect for anything, actually. Uh, animals, of course, because of the soft textures. Portraits, of course, again, because of the soft textures. Landscapes, seascapes, anything that uh, requires a nice, soft, textured feel to it at the end is perfect for. And you can do lots of fine detail on it as well if you use a harder pastel. So a little simple representation of our sunset sky. 
the Astrea clouds using the side of the pastel there. And you can see that the grey paper actually starts to take on a, a kind of evening bluish tinge to it. So we'll just peel that off. That's our horizon line. And there's our little sunset sky. You see the colours sit perfectly on the velour, won't fall off, won't smudge, as long as you rub it in well. So here we have the same sky painted with the same colours on the sandy coloured paper. So here we have the same sky painted yet again with the same colours on the black paper. So why not try the Hannah Muller velour paper for your next pastel painting and don't forget to choose the appropriate colour for the atmosphere that you're trying to create. I was really pleased when I got the opportunity to design a watercolour palette with the SAA. Um, because for, for one thing, I felt that most of the palettes I'd tried, the wells weren't deep enough and one colour used to splash over into the next one. And as we all know, the easiest colour to mix in watercolour is mud. And that's what you eventually get if you can't keep the colours clean and separate. So these deep wells, I thought, were, were really useful. And w when I've come to the end of a painting session, I always clean this area of the palette but I'll leave the fresh colour there. Now, I, I always work from tubes because I like the colour to be semi-liquid, a sort of toothpaste consistency. And I don't like it when it dries out because then I might as well be using pans. And, and I do find that when you're scratching away at dried up colour, it granulates more, it's not as clean and fresh. So I did find that I, with the old palettes I was using that I was wasting uh, quite a lot of paint. But with, with this one, um, I, I leave all that colour in place at the end of a painting session. And it, it has this bit of spontex, which is like a textured sponge material, the sort of thing they make dishcloths out of. Uh, and I just rinse this under the tap and wring it out. It shouldn't be wet or it shouldn't be dripping wet. It should be just nice and damp. And I lay that across the palette and then put the lid on. And incidentally, the lid is designed to have extra mixing areas in case you do need any more. And when you put the lid on, it's a really tight fit uh, and it seals everything in there with that moist sponge. And I found, I, 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 last year I was away for about three weeks and when I came back, that was all still moist and the paint's still usable. So I think it's a real boom for the watercolour artist. Well, folks, time for a short break now, but join us in part two when versatile SAA artist Paul Beatty returns with his favourite piece of cutlery to stare up an acrylic mountain scene in part one of today's Try Your Hand Up project. We'll see you soon. <laughs>